One of these irrigation facilities is the Tono Irrigation Dam, which was constructed by the military regime of General Kutue Champong. It was meant to irrigate almost 2,500 hectares of land for tomato production, but that dream remains elusive. In 1976, General Kutue Champong and his government decided to build this big dam, the Tono Dam here in the Upper East region. Now this purpose was to help farmers here cultivate a variety of crops, including tomatoes. The purpose is to help farmers produce all year round. Land here is now being used to cultivate crops other than tomatoes. Today, total trade in the economic community of West African state ECOWAS stands at an average of 18% per year between 2005 and 2014. It is dominated by mining and agricultural commodities like coffee, cocoa, fruits and vegetables. Ghana, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal accounts for 87% of this trade. Burkina Faso consumes less than 20% of the tomatoes it produces. Ghana is its major buyer. Because farmers in Ghana have stopped production in the minor season, the farmers here sell at high prices, virtually enjoying a monopoly. Talks are ongoing to negotiate for low prices. Amid all these challenges, extortion of traders by their hosts is so rife. Those who resist are sometimes physically assaulted. There is, in principle, the free movement of persons, goods, capital and service within a customs union. It is in recognition of this principle that the ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Treaty was signed by the leaders of the member states in 1979. Article 3 of the revised treaty stimulates the removal of trade barriers and harmonization of trade policies for the establishment of a free trade area, a customs union, a common market and an eventual culmination into a monetary and economic union in West Africa. Therefore, the implementation of the ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Treaty that made possible the free movement of persons, goods and services is seen as a giant step towards the realization of the objectives of ECOWAS. In the face of this, trade movement between Ghana and Burkina Faso, both member states, is not as free and easy as expected. It may seem smooth looking at the smiling faces of these hard-working women. Beneath the smile, however, are memories of torture and harassment they have to endure in a bid to bring fresh tomatoes to Ghana. Ajovi has just returned from Burkina Faso. She traveled from the Volta region of Ghana. We came to Burkina Faso for tomatoes and we are finding it very difficult. We are in huge debt and we are pleading with authorities and our leaders to help us. It's Sunday. Another set will be leaving for Burkina Faso. Vivian Smith and her colleagues have been doing this business for over five years. She leads a team from Greater Accra to Burkina Faso. She recounts the harrowing experience some of the women go through. Even today, today is Sunday, I'm going to Burkina. I'll come back on Tuesday. No bath, I won't bath, I won't take my bath. We have risked our life. We, don't, we can't even get any better place to sleep. We just sleep in the vehicle. We can't even get any quality water to drink. And we have risked our life. We have been using more than 4,500 cities to Burkina just to pay bribe for the police. 
they have been taking 5,000 safer, 10,000 safer. So we we'll take 4,000, uh, 4, uh, 450,000 safer, we change it into safer, just to go and give it to the police. The tomatoes, before you send it to the Accra, the lorry fare, uh, how do you call it, uh, this thing, duty, the price, everything, the bribe we have given to the police at the uh, Burkina, you have to add it on it. Maybe the price will reach like 350 because the quantity is too much in the market. We have to reduce it maybe to 100 guns. Major stakeholders in this enterprise are the loading boys, as they are popularly called. Mohammed is from Bantma in Kumasi. He has been doing this for five years. Because it is profitable being a loading boy. We are paid 1,500 CDs for loading a truck. For every truck, there are as many as eight loading boys, and so we share it amongst ourselves. Four of them stay on the ground while the other four are in the truck. Those on the ground lift the crates to us in the truck and we subsequently arrange them. When you get to Po, you will pay 10,000 CFA francs. From Po to Ouagadougou, you meet more than five police stops and the officials will all demand 10,000 CFA from us. So some of the traders often can't pay us. He chronicles some of the abuses they encounter from which some people have died. You be pure or so, not can any accident or come to Sankara Honum. And any more nom, you be a pure son. There's a gun of phone be like baby for a few. And I'm a catcher say, Uncle, now driver, you know, the police phone in Ura Campo. And see, you can't cry by a Ebusa said driver, you know, I'm not in Abana. There was an accident in front of the camp de Sankara. When we got there, we realized four of the Ghanaians had died on the spot. We were told the driver was with them. They did not release him. And when we came back from Ghana, we were told they beat him throughout the day. They hanged him out there under the scorching sun. Then they released him later. But he died before we got to Konfanochi Teaching Hospital for treatment. This unfortunate incident frequently occurs in Burkina Faso. 35-year-old Akwesiakete recounts an incident where their truck was bent because they mistakenly knocked a motor driver. Uh, last year, 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 we were on our way to buy tomatoes when a motorcycle crossed us and our vehicle mistakenly knocked him down. Residents there rushed to the truck and burnt it. The traders had their money in the truck. This is the only job we know how to do. But our lives are always at risk on the road. The ambassador is not helping us. <laughs> On 27th February 2018, our second day in Burkina Faso, we had reports one of the Ghanaian interpreters had been assaulted. Leaders of the Ghana Tomato Traders and Transporters Association, who were in the country at the time, rushed to the scene to save the situation. After some confrontation with Burkina Bay police, 
they managed to get the victim to the hospital. So, I was on my way to the farm gate to buy some tomatoes. Before we got to the entrance of the road, I realized there was huge traffic for close to 30 minutes. So I stepped out to check out the issue. It was the Ceres police who had stopped every tomato truck, demanding 5,000 safer. Instead of the 3,000 safer bribe we paid them. So I pleaded with them because we didn't have that much. There and then, they cut me. Instead of beating me, alleging it is the interpreters who don't allow the traders to pay what they demand. Finally, they sprayed my eyes with gas. This woman is one of the leaders of the Tomato Traders and Transporters Association in Ghana. She recounts how she and others were nearly killed on one of their trips to attempt to address some trade infractions in Burkina Faso. The challenges we have is some time ago we came here to negotiate for the better condition for tomato traders and tomato farmers in Burkina with a former minister known as Kitaba. When we came, we discussed so many things, but later on, we are going to town when those Burkina Bay stop us on the way. They surround us with a gallon. Later on, we met a Ghanaian who told us that the Burkina Bay want to burn us. So he's talking to them so that we will run away. In fact, he made that so that we get away to run away. They follow us with a motorbike. So we went to Ghana Embassy. There they got back. So, so, so they wanted to burn you? Yeah. Because of what? Because they thought we are coming to spoil their work. Now, we head to Atafua in the Ashanti region for the funeral of 35-year-old Hannah Mensah. She has been selling tomatoes for close to 10 years after her mother won out. The late Hannah Mensah is among three people who died in an accident from Burkina Faso early this year. There were five in the truck. Here, tomato traders, relatives and friends are here to sympathize with the family of Hana. Nana Kwabnan Kruma leads the team to sympathize with the family. This funeral involved five people. Few of them died. One person is amputated and another had a minor injury. We experienced more than 20 accidents on the road. And since the beginning of the year, there have been 10 accidents. Nanan Kruma also revealed how a driver was hanged legs up and tortured till he died. Yes, there was a time when a driver was hanged with his legs up because he knocked a man down. Ten years ago, ni omo ya driver ni di sa wo po emani wi omo ti chire na na de bo soro emani ti hwe form sa ko pe so wi a omo sa na no ko to ni Osei Tufor is chairman of the Tomato Traders and Transporters Association. 
He says maltreatment of members in total disregard for ECOWAS protocol on free movement of people and goods leaves much to be desired. When we enter into their territory, in case of uh, when a trader defaults them, they imprison her or him without any reasons. Yes, they imprison the person. At times, even they change the drivers. They have also penetrated into our cases, whereby uh, a trader reports transporter to them. They will just go and imprison him or her without any reasons. It's one of the most challenges causing the association. As I'm speaking now, during the lean season, meaning from December up to May and then there is none tomato in the country. So we, we are forced to go and then import from the Burkina base. Another challenge with trading in Burkina Faso is the language barrier. Local farmers speak either Mosi or French, which Ghanaian traders hardly understand. They therefore have to employ the services of interpreters who assist in the negotiation of prices. Bargaining may go well or bad, depending on the honesty or otherwise of the interpreter. There are instances the language facilitators inflate prices quoted by farmers and pocket the difference at the expense of Ghanaian traders. Vivian Smith shares her experience of how interpreters use the language to shortchange them. And the interpreters, we don't pay them, but what they do is when we go there, they make one with the farmers, then they add some of the money on it. So if I'm supposed to buy maybe 10,000, they will sell it for me 15,000 because I don't hear the uh, language. Two types of interpreters are involved in the cross-border trade those of Burkina Bay nationality and Ghanaians who speak both Mosi and or French. Al Hassan Ikendi, popularly known as Japan, is leader of the Ghanaian interpreters. So that is the challenge that we, are, we used to face. And most of the times, when we are going on our way to Burkina Faso, every uniform man or soldier, custom or police, used to collect money from us, and we don't, we don't understand this. Many barriers, when even Burkina trucks are not stopping those barriers, but we Ghanaians, tomato truck, it's must for you to stop. And you have to give money, no matter how hard your dog is, is defending, they don't care. It's the look of it, or you, you went and, we need a help from the government. You know, uh, our president, we need help from Akufuado. Because assuming that they have a uh, president and they can collaborate each other to talk uh, against that. We, are, you, we, used, we, we have a lot of suffering on the way going to Burkina Faso. Assume even if you are going to Nigeria, it will not be like that. It's simple because we are speaking English together. You understand? But it's simple, we, are, we don't hear French. So we plead a coup for the look of it. Mr. Nkendi explains in instances where traders fail to bribe their way through, the cargo truck is delayed for days at the risk of product going bad. The transport union in Burkina Faso, OTRAF, has been petitioned over the concerns of visiting traders. National President El Haji Usufu Maiga met with leadership of the Ghana Tomato Traders and Transporters Association on a roadmap for sanity. Legislation, as we stated with you in the meeting, we say that we cannot have people on the top of the trucks. It's against Burkina Faso legislation. So again, we're gonna to try to work. Three, we're gonna work on three proposals to find out if it's, we're able to find one we, which is suitable to you guys. And uh, from that on, we'll work with that single proposal. So we won't have people on the top of the trucks anymore. Relating to the third point, which is about the accident last night, we don't want to make it a big deal, as the president said. Let's put it behind us and work together hands with hands. If there is any problem in the Burkina Faso territory, just give us a call. In the next minute, we'll try to solve that problem. If we don't send somebody, we'll try to give, make phone calls. 
where it's supposed to be in order to solve it. The services of businessmen and member of the ports and harbors were also engaged to negotiate as an agent to influence policy. Mr. Pascal highlights some interventions. make sure we build another free the problem because I told the beat me who said cast crown put me by moon ni move. Tim Biano, the moon organizia, car be our baby. I am if of Munyona man of this document. So Sana Mini Every truck that moves from Ghana should have a special way that will show it is part of the association. We have realized that some of the trucks that come here do not come with waybills. We will use that to control the challenges on the route when it gets to Burkina Faso. Despite all these challenges, Ghanaian traders still ply the route to do business. Among the many reasons is the short shelf life of the tomato produced in Ghana. Researchers in Ghana have often been blamed for failing to come to the table to address the challenge. The Center for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, is a foremost institution that investigates crops and soil for both national and international organizations. Ofei Bonsu, a senior research scientist and a plant breeder at the institute. When we say food security, what we think is rice, uh, maize, the root crops, plantain, cassava, the beans. For us, vegetables are not food. So most of the big projects that comes with funding to support research goes to these staple crops and we leave out the vegetables and as we do this then you realize that research in these vegetables will, and for that matter tomato is not sustained and once it is not sustained you just move to a point and then you stop when you have to restart you may have to even go back before it continues so because of that, we have not been able to develop our tomato materials like our neighbors in Burkina have been able to do. Challenges identified in cross-border trade between Ghana and Burkina Faso require multi-stakeholder approach to address. Research scientist Mr. Bones who says colleagues in Burkina Faso are unwilling to share their research outcomes with Ghanaian scientists. He says Ghana needs sustainable research on tomato to address some of these challenges. Mr. Bonsu points out availability of funds will be key in achieving such objectives. We are seeing what we are seeing in Burkina because Burkina has been consistent in their research on tomato. Burkina knows that they have a reliable market that will pick whatever tomato they produce. And that market is Ghana. Uh, I've been to Burkina before. Burkina don't consume tomato the way we consume tomato in Ghana. So they have put in research, they have put in extension, they have put in infrastructure that you go, they have so uh, many irrigational uh, systems that produce, uh, that, is, that is able to help them produce the tomato. Burkina, some time ago, and I met a scientist working on tomato and I interacted with him 
In fact, that time we had gone to do some collections to help us uh, do some uh, research work with a grant we had from Korea. And for the man to give us some of his genplasm, no, that one the scientist wasn't prepared to. We had to go out to do collection on the field. But uh, what we realized from his laboratory and the interaction that we have in that he has been working uh, on the work for a doing the work for a long time, and he had really good material. That one I must confess, mm -hmm. which uh, they were always evaluating it and year after year coming out with materials that the country can grow. Perhaps a call for a biotechnology consideration could be made in the area of tomato as well. Until new and improved varieties are released by researchers and tried by farmers, the trade will continue. Often during this period, Huge volumes of tomato is imported with a telling effect on prices on the local market. There is a call to appropriately regulate the market to manage the influx and dictate moderate prices to offset the risk of traders. Also, the prices normally go high at their end. But when we get into Ghana, the prices become low because we go in too much. The quantum that we are transporting to our country is more than what our people are demanding. So we also want the government to intervene so that a, a mechanism will put in place so that we can cross-check all this business. The cheap imports are in fact, uh, affecting our local uh, prices. And so if it's possible for the government to regulate tomato prices, uh, uh, peg it at a place it cannot come below, and then peg it at a place it cannot go beyond. It's better, so we stay within that range. Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso, Na Bolina Saaka, has also assured of plans to take up the issue with Burkina Bay authorities. I think we have had a very fruitful discussion. The tomato trade that goes on between Ghana and Burkina Faso uh, is quite enormous. Um, and we need to do everything to make sure that it is very smooth. Um, such bilateral trade not only enhances the economy of uh, the two countries, but as I mentioned, uh, even diplomatically, it brings the two nations together. Uh, we are aware that the common uh, policeman on the road who doesn't know the implications of his actions when he does certain things may do them uh, out of ignorance and on the blind side of his government. But once we have brought them up, we will take uh, serious measures to make sure that uh, they don't occur on daily basis. I mean, you can ask me to pay your, I mean, uh, your bribe, but you can't subject me to inhuman treatment. We won't do that with our citizens in Ghana. Yes. Oh. The current NPP government promised one district, one factory, one village, one dam ahead of the 2016 elections, which it eventually won. How the policy can address Ghana's tomato production and marketing challenges in competition with landlocked Burkina Faso it's only a matter of time. My name is Prince Apia reporting.